Hey everybody, it's Crypto Anarchist again, and I bring you guys another video on cryptocurrencies. Today we're going to focus on something called convergent consensus. Um, other people call it weak blocks. Um, it's you know, it's something that is useful for um, detecting things like double spends or fraud within the blockchain. Um, it's something that Peter Risen talked about at uh, the Satoshi's Vision, Vision Conference. Uh, I like calling it convergent consensus. Um, he call, or you can call it like rolling blocks. I don't know. There's a lot of different names for it. But anyways, um, the reason why convergent consensus is needed is because things like double spends and fraud and everything that goes on within the uh, blockchain, they're not, you know, they're not like obvious. Uh, you can do theoretical. Uh, calculations or like examples or models with uh, you know you can say like hey what if 90% of the network's honest and 10% of the network is uh, malicious well you know th those models work in like a classroom setting or on paper but in the real world you don't know how many of the miners are honest or how many are malicious so uh, the reason why convergent consensus is really nice is because it actually adds to the blockchain um, evidence in the blockchain that will allow miners to uh, find fraud so uh, generally speaking it's assumed that you know at least uh, a majority of the hash rate is honest you know they you usually assume attackers don't have 51 percent of the hash rate um, so the convergent consensus sort of relies on that as a principle in order for it to sort of function I mean even if you do have an attacker controlling the hash rate you there's things you can figure out but um, let's go ahead and talk about what convergent consensus is and how it works so all convergent consensus is is it's um, <clears throat> A process by which you take hashes that are near misses and you apply statistical analysis to these near miss hashes to uh, find anomalies in uh, the transaction set that, uh, you know, in the UTXO set basically. So you're basically looking to see like each miner who gets a near miss, what are the transactions that are in the block that that miner is trying to propagate and can we use the transactions in that block to detect fraud that this specific miner is trying to uh, uh, to create you know, in the network. Um, and so basically uh, the way that this works is uh, it just uses the fact that uh, what a hash is, uh, in case a lot of people are, you know, I think a lot of people are sort of confused with what hashes are in the SHA-256 algorithm that Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash uses. Um, but a hash is just, a, it's a random string of uh, letters and numbers, you know, and so uh, the purpose of the hashes in Bitcoin is uh, w when a miner tries to mine a block, they basically run all the transactions through a hash and they get this random output and if this random output that they get uh, has enough zeros at the beginning uh, of the hash uh, if it has enough leading zeros then uh, the miners rewarded the block reward and I know that sounds kind of confusing but the reason for this is if you think about it if you're creating a random hash like your hash there's no you have no way of knowing what the hash will end up being it's just a random string of letters and numbers you put random inputs in get random inputs out um, so obviously if you're looking for a hash that has like let's say you know 20 leading zeros I don't know exactly what you're looking for in Bitcoin right now but if you have 20 leading zeros and the hash can use something like you know let's say 60 characters for uh, each character then obviously the chance of you getting a hash that has 20 leading zeros is unbelievably ridiculously high that that example might like I, I didn't do any of the math for that example so I don't know what that actually turns out to be so don't take that to be what the difficulty is on Bitcoin right now but anyways um so a near miss on a hash so let's say you're looking for 20 uh, leading zeros a near miss or a near miss that you would use for convergent consensus is uh, let's say a, a hash that has 18 leading zeros. So you know 18 leading zeros, that's really hard to get. Um, and so it's a proof of work that is close to as much work as you need to claim the block reward, but not enough. But if you collect all the proof of works that are close, then you can analyze them and see differences in what's going on with those uh, those near miss blocks that you're propagating throughout the network, okay? And so this 
this provides a lot of information for the miners because if you only have one hash, you you have to assume that that hash is valid, and uh, you know you can have miners who are being bribed throughout the network, so that hash might be invalid, and you might not figure it out till later on. But if you're doing something like uh, conver convergent consensus, uh, this this really exposes this fraudulent activity, and the reason why this works is because uh, again, if you if you have uh, an attacker, and we're assuming this attacker has less than 51% of the network. If you have an attacker with, like, let's say, 10% of the network, uh, then you will have 10% of, uh, you know, the hashes basically coming up sort of fraudulent. Uh, and when you have 10% of the hashes coming up sort of fraudulent, the the result is is that if you actually take a statistical analysis, um, if you take it back a couple uh, orders of magnitude. Uh, it starts becoming insanely impossible. Like if you only have, like if you're examining a set of like let's say a thousand near misses, and only ten of the the near misses have one particular transaction in that hash, but then that hash ends up being taken, you know, as the hash accepted by by the majority. Uh, you know, the, the chances of that happening if the, that miner is honest is it's exponentially small. Okay, um, and so the reason why you want this information out there is just so that the miners can use it. One thing that I think uh, should be talked about here is I don't think you should ever really like force the network to adopt a certain block. I think the miners should always be able to choose, but they should always have the information available. Okay. Um, I don't know specifically how the implement, implementation of convergent consensus is going to work and uh, you know ex exactly what the protocol is to that specific of a level so um, you know maybe commenters can speak on that below uh, I don't particularly know but uh, anyways again the whole point of the convergent is consensus is that since hashes are random string beginning with zeros if you only rely on one single hash then you have to just trust that hash is legitimate until further hashes come in and further blocks are added to the blockchain um, but if you use near misses then you you just have more information and so the thought behind convergent consensus is just hey if you have that information already like if those blocks are already being mined not not the blocks are being mined if those hashes are already being created and that information is already being created by the miners why not use it you know why not use that information if you have it if it's helpful um, and so uh, the other thing that it actually does is it uh, it actually gives you um, a, it gives you a very high security in multiple ways and what I have here is the title of this slide where it says two orders of magnitude gives very high security what I mean by this is that the two orders of magnitude means like let's say if you're like I said before if you're looking for 20 leading zeros then the near misses you'll include the anything with you know 19 leading zeros or 18 leading zeros because if you do that then the chances of you know like that just it just helps for statistical analysis you know it just helps for your statistical analysis if you have multiple orders of magnitude uh, th the one thing you have to watch out for though is you don't want to make too many orders of magnitude you know you don't want to try to have too many uh, near misses propagated because then you're just sort of wasting time um, as the one the one weakness with uh, weak blocks or convergent consensus that I know of is that it increases the uh, bandwidth usage um, but anyways again moving on to how convergent consensus is used here uh, the, the consensus now becomes a rolling consensus and what I mean by that is that if you have all these near misses in there you can say okay well you not, not only do you have uh, transactions that have confirmations because we know you know confirmations are with every block but then you would have near miss uh, verification so then you would have two layers of security to transactions and this again the near misses don't actually add any security in the long run however it does give you more specific information about that transaction and whether or not that transaction you know could be part of a fraudulent attack on the network so it does give you more specific security with specific transactions in the uh, block like before the block is confirmed um, so it is it's actually very nice I, I really like a lot of the things about convergent consensus um, uh, one thing I do want to talk about is that convergent consensus it's not it's not the only way uh, we're going to talk about later some of the people who are uh, attacking convergent consensus uh, one of them is Craig Wright and I think he gets this really wrong when he assumes that like you know 
everyone's going to use the same protocol for using Bitcoin. I think there should be multiple wallet and multiple node Im implementations, and not everybody needs needs to use the same one. You know, um, miners have different uh, requirements than you know just hobby users, and there's a lot of different things that you can do. Like, so merchants might want convergent consensus more than miners uh, or high frequency traders because a lot of merchants can you know if they if they have the convergent consensus, they can still rely on you know zero confirmation transactions but they can also get the uh, verified transactions of the uh, uh, convergent consent or that that the uh, convergent consensus allows and uh, so I, I really feel like there should be multiple implementations. I think that the merchants should just use whatever that they want, and then you know the wallet no or the people who create the wallet or the node uh, software implementation should just add, add a very small fee onto all transactions. Because remember, Bitcoin Cash is the king of small fees. So just create new like all these people. Like the one thing uh, I guess that's really good about this is Peter Ryzen does have his own uh, node uh, software, Bitcoin Unlimited. Uh, so they should be able to. In Apply, or they should be able to do this on their own, you know, whether or not the other software implement, implementations do this. And I really think we should fracture the different node uh, and wallet software up just so that they offer different uh, advantages. You know, not all of them have to work on the same in the same way. Um, People should just use what's best for them. But uh, the the one thing, the other things that are really good about this is that uh, again, obviously, everybody has the real time security of unconfirmed transactions. So not only are do trans transactions get confirmations, like I said, you get verified, or they get verified through the weak blocks or the uh, uh, you know the near misses. So you can say, okay, this one doesn't have any confirmations, but it's got you know. 20 near misses so far in one minute, so that's pretty good. And, you know, that's in line with how many about you would expect, so that's pretty good. And so you can say, well, we can trust this pretty well. And so then that, that actually just, it just gives you an accurate rep representation within the time period when the blocks aren't being confirmed. I really, I really like a lot of things about converging consensus. The other thing too is that when a miner actually finds a block, they don't have to propagate all the new things to the network. You know, they can just propagate the the uh, transactions that aren't already in or that aren't or that haven't already been uh, added through the near misses um, and so it, it just makes it easy it makes a lot of things really easy and it makes the uh, window for attack for somebody who's trying to do fraud on the network like without convergent consensus you've got 10 minutes because that's when blocks confirm and that's the only way that you can figure sh shit out on the network um, because that's the only time that it's published so uh, if you have convergent consensus, you just have more information out there. So the window for attack, uh, it, it decreases by up to a factor of 10. You know, your attack vector, it, it's, it decreases um, by an order of magnitude, which is, it, that's a great improvement. That's massive. Um, but moving on, uh, let's talk about the weaknesses of convergent consensus and the uh, Craig Wright debacle slash meltdown. So Craig uh, scorched earth right versus the weak blocks. Uh, weak blocks add extra bandwidth, with, which is kind of bad. Um, but again, like I said, you don't have to use this implementation. It's useful for some people. Some people won't care about the bandwidth. And if you, you know, again, the wallet software provider should just I don't know why people, to a large extent, don't do this, but they should just have like a small fee for people who provide this service. You know, just this is not necessarily related to what we're talking about here, but another service that I think should be provided by miners is some sort of sharding, where it's sort of like a centralized version of sharding, where it's like, hey, you're just going to connect to a bunch of competing miners, like, like let's say the top eight miners in Bitcoin Cash. I don't know who that is. I, it's like got to be what Jihan Wu, Roger Ver. Coin Geek, SBI, you know, I don't know who all the top five are. That's like, or top five or top eight are. But you, you could connect to a bunch of those, and they could almost just send you information uh, just for specific wallet addresses, and you could do almost a centralized version of sharding that's still basically trustless. Um, and they could just have a wallet software service that they provide that only, uh, you know, you only download transactions from those. Uh, wallet addresses, but the miners could have a small micro transaction or a micro fee added to every transaction that they get paid for the service. I don't know why the miners and like the software providers and the developers and the Bitcoin and cash community are not doing this. You know, Craig is trying, it, it almost seems like he's trying to say everybody has to do everything the same way with his scorched earth, pol earth policy. Uh, I think, I really think that you should have multiple software implementations. Like you should have one uh, node software implementation 
implementation where you have convergent consensus, one where you have no convergent consensus just to try and make sure that you get blocks propagating as fast as possible possible when they're confirmed, you know, maybe and that's better for zero confirmation transactions. And then you have another wallet software implementation that has, you know, some sort of, uh, it could even be a centralized version of blockchain sharding just for users, hobby users who are like, hey, I want to kind of use the node software and stuff like I'm using the blockchain just to learn about it, just to use the commands on it. Um, but they, they don't want to have to pay for all the storage costs for all the stuff that's going to be put on the blockchain. They only want to, you know, use like almost a mini version of the blockchain just as a test network. You know, I don't know why software developers and people like Craig Ryan aren't offering things like this. I think this scorched earth policy that he's following is really, it's not helping at all. But again, you know, the weak blocks add extra bandwidth. Uh, it sort of forces conformity to some extent. You know, Craig Wright has a tweet talking about this, but when you're talking about trying to verify transactions, I feel like conformity is a good thing. Uh, having a bunch of competing transactions in the uh, mempool that are, you know, it's either one or the other can be confirmed, that's not a good thing. And, you know, just sort of pointing these out in the different miners who are accepting different ones and having that information available publicly, that seems like a good thing. So, if it, you know, it seems like we're forcing conformity by removing fraud. So I don't see any negative with this. Uh, other than, you know, it might cost more bandwidth, so for certain people, they might not want to use a node implementation that uses this. I think it should be added for some. It doesn't have to be added for all. I don't know why uh, Craig is following this um, scorched earth policy. And, you know, that's just my personal thoughts on this whole debacle with uh, Craig Wright here is... You know, yeah, yeah. There's weaknesses to convergent consensus. There's weaknesses to everything. Um, I feel like the merchants, miners, and consumers should choose, and you should add basically anything that the market wants. And that's this is again. I don't know why people aren't doing this because like you can add all these things and add like a micro fee for the service that you do and make money doing it. I know they've added like cash shuffle and things like that, but do the people who uh, use these wallet or create this wallet software do they make money for it like are they making money to improve their software uh, and all they have to do is provide or, or add a small tiny microtransaction fee uh, to get paid or something you know everyone in this community like to some extent open source is good but everyone needs to start trying to make money here and Craig Wright trying to say hey we're gonna all just follow one path like that's not gonna make more money than you know if you have multiple node implementations you know if so long as you can have one node op like node software that uses convergent consensus and one that doesn't why can't miners you know utilize the information provided by both and the uh, advantages provided by both I don't see I don't see what the issue is it's like you know you use the internet and you have multiple browsers so why can't you have multiple software applications for you know or in node implementations for wallets and you know nodes and miners for Bitcoin I don't understand what this scorched earth it's all one way or it's all never gonna work policy is for a lot of people but anyways that's just my thoughts um i've seen some comments recently that are, people are asking for me to put up something for donations i will pretty soon but i want to put the donations up actually when i do tutorials these things that are educational or news related i don't think i should put donations up for those just because um you know, there's you can you can always educate yourself on this. So I'm not necessarily adding anything new uh, when I'm doing these educational things. This this information is out there. I know it's valuable, so I know some people want to donate because of it. Um, but I want to put the donation specifically with the tutorial videos because in the tutorial videos, I know for a fact that for anyone watching it, like they're learning something in it. Or and if they're not learning something in it, they can at least you know create their own tutorial video and improve upon the tutorial video that I create. So I know for a fact I'm creating value in the community. And then anyone who you know watches these ones that are more educational or more news related and they want to donate as well, you'll be able to donate with the tutorial videos. But just so you know, anyone who's interested in donating, I will put up uh, donation addresses with tutorial videos. But that's the way that I want to do it with this channel. That way I focus more on educational things, because I, I like talking about the educational things. That's what really interests me in the crypto. So uh, in the crypto space, you know, not only the cryptography aspects, but the economics, uh, some of the aspects of the code, the network topology, things like that. I really like I like all of it um, uh, as far as the educational part goes. But the uh, tutorial bit, that's where uh, 
you know, I know a lot about the tutorial side or like showing people how to use it, and that's where I want to put my uh, donation addresses up with. But anyways, that's just how it's going to be. So um, anyways, there's, <laughs> there's going to be more videos coming out. Uh, sorry to say anyways, like 30 times here at the end of this video, but uh, expect some tutorial videos coming up soon. I'm actually going to do a tutorial video on how to use a full node. Uh, and I'm going to do this tutorial video do using Zcoin. Uh, the reason why I'm going to use Zcoin is just because uh, the uh, total storage space of Zcoin is pretty low, so I don't want to use something like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Bitcoin Cash for a tutorial video just because you're going to have to use up a lot of storage space, and a lot of people don't have that, so I want to use a smaller coin, and Zcoin's got a lot of good aspects to it. And I want to show people why there's a lot of coins out there that are very well... Um, funded that have a lot of investment in them and their node applications are not very good. Uh, I'm personally not very impressed with uh, the node applications for things like Zcash and Zencash and basi basically anything ZK snarks because the wallet file is not encrypted. Uh, you know things like Zcoin and Bitcoin Cash they have AES encryption um, and so they're very secure but a lot of the node applications they're not very secure or the features they have are not actually that great when compared to other node applications. And a lot of people don't know this because they only run, run a couple nodes, but I've got a pretty decent computer, so I've got uh, multiple nodes running, or you know, multiple nodes from multiple different coins, and so I can compare them. So anyways, I'm gonna do some tutorials on that, as well as PGP. Um, so you can expect a lot more. Um, so uh, yeah, just keep it, uh, keep it posted.